Welcome to my YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe, like my videos and spread the word. It's time we do some more equations but first we need to know what total peripheral resistance is. It's the hindrance to blood flow inside the arteries when the arteries try to constrict. Almost all of this resistance is provided by arterioles. These arterioles are under constant sympathetic stimulation via alpha 1, so they tend to be constricted all the time and blood has somewhat difficult time flowing inside. This is represented by total peripheral resistance. So we go to our first equation which tells us how to calculate mean arterial pressure. It is calculated by multiplying cardiac output with total peripheral resistance. Mean arterial pressure is an indicator of perfusion to vital organs, that is how well is blood flowing to body tissues and organs. So mean arterial pressure depends on total peripheral resistance. If we increase total peripheral resistance, mean arterial pressure increases. But mean arterial pressure also depends on cardiac output. We saw in the previous video that cardiac output equals stroke volume multiplied by heart rate. So, mean arterial pressure indirectly depends upon stroke volume and heart rate such that if we increase stroke volume or increase the heart rate or increase both of them, mean arterial pressure will increase. Mean arterial pressure at rest can also be calculated by adding two-thirds of diastolic blood pressure and one-third of systolic blood pressure. Let's calculate pulse pressure which equals systolic blood pressure minus diastolic blood pressure. Why do we need to know pulse pressure? It tells us how much force is generated by heart during each heart beat. Pulse pressure is directly related to stroke volume meaning if we increase stroke volume pulse pressure increases and if we decrease stroke volume, the pulse pressure also goes down. Similarly, pulse pressure is inversely related to arterial compliance. What does compliance mean? Compliance means how easy it is to stretch an artery. If it's easier to stretch, we call it more compliant. If it is hard to stretch, we call it less compliant or a stiff artery. So because of the inverse relation, if we increase compliance, pulse pressure decreases. And when we decrease compliance, pulse pressure increases. So why do we need to know these relations? We need to know these relations to better understand a bunch of conditions which either increase or decrease pulse pressure. Let's go over some conditions which increase stroke volume and or decrease compliance to give us increased pulse pressure. Let's see how they do that. So the first example is hyperthyroidism where we have a ton of thyroid hormone and thyroid hormone increases expression of beta-1 receptors on heart. More beta-1 receptors on heart cause increased contraction force. So we get increased stroke volume and as a result increased pulse pressure. That's how hyperthyroidism increases pulse pressure. The second example is aortic regurgitation in which the aortic valve is loose. So the heart can push out more blood because there is less resistance which results in increased stroke volume and increased pulse pressure. The third example here is a stiff aorta which is seen in old age. Like we discussed, a stiff vessel is less compliant. Decreasing compliance results in increased pulse pressure. There's also another way of looking at this stiff aorta because the stiff aorta gives us isolated systolic hypertension. Systolic blood pressure is higher compared to diastolic blood pressure. Putting that into the equation gives us increased pulse pressure. This is looking at the same concept in two different ways. Obstructive sleep apnea also results in increased pulse pressure because it activates sympathetic system and if you recall from previous video, 
our sympathetic system increases stroke volume, which results in increased pulse pressure. Exercise also activates sympathetic system and increases stroke volume, but it gives us a transient increase in pulse pressure. Once we stop, the pulse pressure goes back to normal. Now let's look at some conditions that decrease stroke volume and cause decreased pulse pressure. Number one, aortic stenosis. Aortic valve is stiff, won't allow much blood to pass through, or fails to pump out enough blood, so we get decreased stroke volume and decreased pulse pressure. Cardiac tamponade is a second example. The heart is surrounded by lots of fluid. It can't relax properly, which results in decreased filling of the heart, which causes decreased stroke volume and decreased pulse pressure. In cardiogenic shock and heart failure, the heart is damaged and can't contract properly, so the stroke volume is down and pulse pressure is also down. So that's it for now till the next video. Also do check out my other videos and don't forget to subscribe.